Fresh off that press. What's the difference between a hot cake and a hot take? It's the C. Oh, yeah. Hot cakes hit your Monday morning hot cakes. Uh, two for ten or one for five on your lo fi Monday hot cakes. Get them all they hot. La 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 la. la, la. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the lo fi. <clears throat> This morning's news, fresh off that press, from Santa Barbara, Santa Fe, Ohio. It's 8 a.m. Where are you? W W L O F I. Five Palace side coming at you. Michael Pickering here talking our famous question. What's going on in the world today? And straight to it, to the United Nations we go. You see, we've talked about the military coup in Myanmar quite a bit on the show over the past uh, almost two years now, really. The military coup took place on February 1st, 2021. And since then, the military has ruled. They said they were going to go back to democracy, but they haven't. However, at the United Nations, the UN ambassador of Myanmar has remained the same one from the democratic government that was overthrown in 2021. The United Nations has refused to recognize the military as legitimate and therefore, therefore refuses to allow the military's chosen diplomat to take their seat at the UN. And, you know, this may seem like just a, a simple little thing. Especially since in the West, you know, people tend to view the UN as not really a big deal. But for developing countries and their governments, this is a huge deal. And this past week, the United Nations General Assembly's Credentials Committee once again refused to let the military's chosen representative take their seat. Just showing that after almost two years, people are still mad as hell at the Myanmar military. But let's let's switch gears to another place where there are some other people who are mad as hell as well. Let's go to Tunisia. In Tunisia, the birthplace of the Arab Spring that we've talked so much about. You know, the only successful case of democratization that lasted, but then was overthrown by their own president. Well, the latest there. Parliamentary elections took place for the national level this past week. And of course, the opposition parties and opposition to the president really meaning almost everyone at this point in the country, they boycotted the election. Now get this. For a national parliamentary election, which is the same and comparable to our national congressional elections, mind you, voter turnout rate was under 9%. 9% voter turnout rate for national legislative elections. The people said, screw you, Mr. President, this ain't democracy, and it ain't what we signed up for, and hasta luego, resign now, goodbye, au revoir, it, it, it's done. I mean, this is a big deal, people. Let's keep a close eye on Tunisia to see how the president reacts to this, because people are calling for him to resign. The story here is hardly over. Now let's head on over to El Salvador, and only a quick update for you here, people. Congress there has re-upped the president's nationwide state of emergency. Again. Meaning more people, by the thousands, will continue to keep getting arrested. Going all the way into the new year of 2023. Eyes open on El Salvador, people. Because the month of March approaches quickly. And at that point, it will make a year that El Salvador has been in a constant state of nationwide state of emergency. Ears to the ground on El Salvador. Now we're heading over to the latest news from the patriarchy in Sudan, not to be confused with the global patriarchy, which also still exists and is bullshit, but this is a special breed of bullshit here. A 20-year-old woman has begun serving a six-month prison sentence for being convicted of an obscene act, which was kissing a man. 20 years old, six months in prison for kissing someone. Look, there's a lot of other details for this case. I'm not going to give it to you. You can easily find this and look it up for yourself. But it's not going to change what it all boils down to here. 
And that is what I want to bring your attention to. A young woman is going to jail in Sudan for kissing a man because men rule the country and they call it obscene and a jailable offense. So they're sending this 20-year-old woman to jail for six months. Now, some people may say, well, well, isn't this a case of religion and politics? Question mark. And to that I say, no. This is a case of the patriarchy using religion to make patrimonial control of women look like it was ordained by God. Smoke and mirrors, people. The patriarchy tries to hide itself in so many different ways. This case in Sudan is some bullshit. But we'll be keeping an eye out for any updates and hope this case gets appealed and that young woman will be released soon. And a last piece of news to send you on your way to the week. To New Zealand, we go. Always doing things big in New Zealand. And they have enacted some major legislation that will phase out and ban cigarettes in the country forever. That's right. So this is how the phase out works. At the moment, you have to be 18 to buy cigarettes. They're changing that to 24. So you can still smoke, but you can't buy them, which I think is kind of funny. You can be 18, 19, you can smoke legally, but you can't buy them. All right, all right, gotcha, gotcha. Then they're making it that anyone born on or after January 1st of 2009 is banned for life from smoking. Now, someone who was born in 2009 right now is only going to be 14 years old in 2023. You know when this law takes effect? But they aren't even old enough to smoke yet, so, so who cares, right? What, I mean, what, what's the point of that? Starting early. You'll, you'll catch on in a second. Because, you see, once they become 18, or even when that person who was born in 20, uh, 2009, even when they turn 24 in 10 years from now, if they go to a store and try to buy cigarettes at 24 years old, when they get ID'd, it's going to say 2009 is their birthday. And they won't be able to buy cigarettes. They'll get refused because they're banned for life. Simple as that. Anyone born on or before 2009 has a lifetime ban on smoking. Now, the old guard, they can still smoke their lives away. No problem. And as time goes on, the youngest legal person still smoking will increase in age because younger people are banned from joining the legal smoking population. And inevitably, what this does is literally phase out all smokers from New Zealand via generational replacement. Interesting, is it not? You know, this reminds me of a certain Keatsian policy proposal I've once read. One of the best I ever read as well. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Check out Friday's blog post up on lofipolysci.com. And check us out on Instagram and LinkedIn, people. Connect to us. And it's not a cliche or a catchphrase. It's a lifestyle. Always remember that Lo-Fi Poli Sci is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Talk to you soon, Lo-Fi listeners. Pickering, signing off. <laughs>